Well, I'd like to say thank you for inviting me over to the Full Gospel Businessmen of America chapter in Cafe La France, Preston Road, North Dallas. Pleasure to be here. Um, it's kind of a new experience for me because I'm not very techy and uh, I, I don't often speak. <laughs> so, uh, I am a realtor, Central Center One Judge Five Company, and uh, came to know the Lord. Kind of medium in life, I guess, but uh, I was born uh, in uh, Downing, Missouri, town population 492 when I left there. So it's probably less by now. Uh, grew up in a, a normal situation. My father had a service station, and so we were business people, learned the work ethic, learned how to sweep floors, change tires, wash windshields, and pump gas. Our ethyl pump was one of those that you see that has the, you use for fishbowls now, where you pump that thing and pump it up from the tank into the globe and then you could put it into people's cars. We didn't have very many of that, those, those kind of cars in town. Um, Virginia McCarter was a school teacher of mine, and she was married to the doctor, and she drove a big Buick. And it had a clean windshield, because she was a good looker. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so we, my head brother, older brother, kind of normal, uh, we, um, to tell how things were. Uh, one thing we did was we'd buy a Coke and then we'd have this wino get us a pint of whiskey and we'd pour out half the Coke and put it, fill it up with whiskey and, and try to get high, I guess. And I, uh, after high school, I went to Chillicothe Business College. This was a, a famous college, a large college. At one time, it was getting small because they had depended on the government to provide their students and other things. And actually, I was the last graduating class from, from that school, from that campus. I uh, got a job with Frisco Railroad in Kansas City, uh, passenger traffic department sales agent. I sold tickets. Uh, one, one, uh, once I took a, a trip to, uh, to Florida in the Florida Special, and uh, it was a nice trip. I really enjoyed it. Um, okay. The, uh, you mentioned uh, retirement. Uh, shortly after I went to work there, uh, Mr. A.C. Bringelson, the chief traffic manager, retired. They had a party for him, gave him a watch and a set of golf clubs. In a couple of months, he was dead. He had absolutely nothing to live for, and there was no life. So when people ask me, are you retired? And I said, no, not really. And they said, when are you going to retire? And I said, well, I don't believe in it. Because right. I know what happens to you when you retire. Mm -hmm. So that's a joke. Um, no, it's not. No. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Frisco Railroad. Worked there um, for several years, and uh, they were discontinuing the draft for uh, Korean War veterans. And uh, my draft board uh, drafted me, along with everybody else they could find, in order to get these benefits. So uh, before I went uh, into the uh, induction, my uh, preacher, uh, Methodist Church, Bryan, Missouri, Al Mitchner, had me, he and his wife had me over for a snack. And then uh, the next day he drove me down to Brookfield. I got the in induction. Uh, it would be on a train going through Texas. I thought this is the biggest state I've ever seen in my life, and it was. Uh, took basic training at uh, El Paso, uh, Fort Bliss. Uh, one Sunday, or before Sunday, a guy asked or mentioned that he uh, was taking some people up to uh, Baptist Church. So we went to the Sunrise Baptist Church outside of El Paso, and uh, they gave an altar call. And I felt like somebody needed to get saved. But my, my, my knuckles got white on the pew in front of me. Nobody went forward there. From El Paso, uh, basic, I went to uh, Fort Hood at uh, Killeen. Uh, fell equipped with uh, uh, Floyd, and one of my boy, buddies was Floyd Ray Watley. 
when Floyd Lynch walked with a limp because he had had an accident, he probably shouldn't have been in the army. But he carried a Bible. And uh, he uh, witnessed to people. He was a Christian. Um, so we went to First Baptist Church there. One Sunday, um, our other buddy, Jack, he flipped his songbook into my belly and went down to the altar. Got saved. His life changed. So later I got on orders to go to Europe. And a uh, bit concerned about that. And I thought, well, you know, what if the boat sinks? What if something happens while I'm out of the country? Am I going to go to heaven? Or, or am, I, am I not? I wasn't sure. So uh, at that service, I sat in the balcony. And again, white knuckles on the pew in front of me. Uh, Floyd and Jack were down there in the choir. Sergeant Cashman, his wife, he was a Sunday school teacher. Nobody got saved that night. So we drove home. I had a little car and uh, dropped off the other fellows. And Floyd and Jack and I parked out behind the barracks. And somebody said, one of them said, uh, let's go over to the chapel. So Floyd and I were at the front at the altar, and Jack was milling around, and he came up with a track. And he said, hey, Don, look at this. And I said, oh, yeah. A bolt of lightning came down and hit me in the belly. And I, Floyd led me in the sinner's prayer, as you all know, sinner prayer, and uh, walked out of the chapel, and I took the cigarettes out of my pocket, threw them in the bushes, and they're still there. Um, went back to the uh, 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 barracks and went in the restroom and um, Floyd uh, was telling me uh, I need to read the Bible. He said, have you got a Bible? And I said, well, I got the, the New Testament that they gave me when I got drafted. And he said, okay, well, I've got this Bible. Um, I don't really like it. I'll give it to you. <laughs> so he did. got it. Wow. So, it's a little worse for weather, for wear, and it got used a lot. Uh, Floyd made a dedication page on the front, front page, and Floyd wrote on the back of it, and there's notes in the Roman, Roman Road, Plan of Salvation, and so forth like that in there. Um, Okay, I'm on my way to Europe. I uh, come back to Browning. Uh, my mother played the piano at the church, and she says, uh, Al wants to see you before service in the office. So I went back there. He said, Dad, I want you to leave the song service. I said, well, I can't sing. He said, well, your mom, we picked out these songs. Uh, if they're okay with you, uh, just introduce them. So I, I get the microphone again, and... Uh, in front of this, con this church that I had grown up in and been there all of my life, going through Sunday school and youth groups and so forth like that, I told the people I had just received Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. I was born again. I was a new creature in Christ Jesus. And since I was going to be going overseas, I wanted to pray for me. Mrs. Wolf came up to me after the service. She said, oh, I've been praying for you all these years. I'm so glad you finally came to know the Lord as your personal Savior. Okay. Uh, went to Fort Dix, New Jersey. Uh, preparation for going overseas. Um, my friend John was in New York. and We met, made out to meet. So uh, anyway, I, I thought I might need a... Since I use an electric razor, I thought I might need a, uh, an adapter... And there was a hardware store just outside of the main gate of the space. So I walked over there, walked out there, went to the hardware store and got what I thought I needed. And I was coming back in to the, to the gate. Halt! Uh-oh. The guard, the duty guard, had seen me come in. And so he said, uh, let me see your pass. I said, well, I don't have a pass. He said, uh, what's your name? I said, Donald Nevins. Where are you from? Uh, Missouri. What town? 
Brownie. Is your brother's name Jim? <laughs> so he invited me to, to go to his home for Sunday dinner. It was delightful. His wife, uh, nice home, lake in the background, wooded area. It's, uh, really a, a treasure. Uh, one of my uh, favorite writers is uh, Squire Rushnell. Squire Rushnell wrote a book, Got Winks. He said that uh, the, the Bible really doesn't recognize constant. Uh, yeah, what's the word? Uh, things that things that happen. Coincidence. Coincidence. That's it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, that God doesn't really recognize coincidences that they for God's people, they're planned. This was a God week. Who'd have thunk it? <coughs> so I um, needed to go see John. Uh, they canceled all passes, and the, uh, the guy at the duty desk, I told him it was an emergency. Anyway, he gave me a pass, <laughs> and I got to see John. And, Say uh, Yankee Stadium, yada, 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 New York. Okay, next I'm standing on the fantail of a troop ship, watching the Statue of Liberty, the skyscrapers of New York, um, fading into the distance. I looked around, I was the only one standing there. Everybody else had gotten their guard duty, KP, whatever, duty stations. All I had was an upper bunk and a new Bible. So I spent that seven days staying out of people's way, eating, sleeping, and going to the bathroom, and watching the porpoise swing alongside of us, the jellyfish. I had always thought of the ocean as being a tub of water. It ain't. It's alive. So we, we uh, came to Bremerhaven, Germany, and uh, I'd heard about this good German beer. I thought, I'm going to get me some good German beer. I was, I was a beer drinker. Um, had been in college anyway. So uh, anyway, I laid down on the bunk and went to sleep. I didn't get the good German beer. Took a train to uh, France. I was being stationed at the 34th General Hospital at La Chapelle, saint uh, Orléans, near Orléans, France. So anyway, we changed trains. I had a glass of wine with a friend. And uh, I was picked up by a Freeman in the Jeep, and he told me about their enlistment club. So uh, I went to the enlistment club and stacked beer bottles up on that counter like I had done back in college. Next morning, I went to the uh, mess hall, and I bowed my head over my food like we had done back in Texas. And I said, Lord, this ain't going to work. I can't live this life by myself. If there's not a Christian here, I pray you tell me. So a guy comes over, turns the chair around, and sits down. He said, hi, I'm so, so uh, you're new here, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, are you a Christian? I noticed you prayed. And I said, yes. He said, talk to me in the chapel. We had prayer meetings, a group of fellowship, all the time I was there. So, um, hadn't been there very long, and we went to, there was a religious retreat in Berchtesgaden, Germany. You may know where Burgess Gatton is, that's where they had the Oklahoma Golf every 10 years. And this was Hitler's, one of his favorite hangouts. So uh, we went there, had a trip to Salzburg and the salt mines, took a bicycle and ride through the countryside, went up on the ski lift. It was a very nice trip. Dewey, Marcella, Dewey and Marcella Barr had the car, and they took three of us guys up there to that uh, meeting. They had fellowship all the time. Uh, we also took a trip to Holland one time. Five of us in a Volkswagen Beetle <laughs> went to Holland, saw the tulips, uh, North 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 Beach, whatever it is, up there, and uh, that was pretty. I like I like Holland. Thank you, Billy. <laughs> um, went to Italy. Went to Italy, uh, England, and. Uh, I got to give testimony at, at Trafalgar Square. Went through the, uh, I did, just happened. I, had, I happened to be there, they were having a meeting, and 
uh, people took me home with them and fed me a, uh, the sandwich they fed me was cucumbers and pickled beets on white bread. <laughs> this was England, people. <laughs> Long time ago. I didn't even learn to count their money either. Okay, where am I? Back home, um, I got, got out of the Army New Year's Eve, 1956. I got saved on August 28, 1955. Um, so I said that, uh, okay. So um, Al Mitchner, our pastor, uh, agreed to drive me back to Kansas City where I worked. But they were real anxious to get me back so I didn't get to spend any time at home. And uh, so on, going back, he had, uh, he had some business there and he stopped by to see some friends of his in the little white stucco church on 15th Street in Kansas City. Okay. Um, I worshiped with some people. I went back there to worship. Those people would stand with their hands raised in the air and sing choruses for, like they were going to quit. This Methodist boy had trouble with that. <laughs> so anyway, they, uh, I was also wor I was later worshiping with Assembly God Church down in uh, South, Camp, South Town. And people took me home to feed me because I was out of the army and single. And uh, they had three little girls, maybe six, eight, and ten. And I took these three girls to, uh, to the zoo, Shore Park Zoo in Kansas City. Looking over across the African Veldt, this was a pit where the animals ran and people walked around it. And I saw three girls. In pretty scarves. With lots of pen, cream and petticoats, three different colors. And uh, so we went into the building where they had the giraffes. And I looked over there, and there was Bob and Evie, people from this little white st stucco church, and they were talking with these three girls. So I go over and I said, well, hi, Bob. Uh, <coughs> he said, Don, I want you to meet Lorraine, Elaine, and Marion. That's good. Next Saturday, I'm in my office with my little black book. I've been gone out of circulation for two years. Um, the guys were my drinking buddies. I didn't do that anymore. And the girls were my, uh, I didn't do that anymore. So uh, anyway, I called Kenny Brewer. He, was, he worked for the Union Pacific. I worked for Frisco. And uh, uh, his wife, Alexa, answered the phone. And she said, uh, Don, we're having tacos. Uh, I got somebody I want you to meet. So I drive up in my 1956 Chevrolet Bel Air two-door hardtop with fuel exhaust. And coming out the front door was this with her mom and dad. She put them in her car, and as she walked back, I got out across the got in step with her, and went in the house. Lex was on the phone. You know how the phone was? You had one phone, hardwired, of course. And uh, she said, Don, have, have you already met Lorraine? She was going to fix me up with her. So she said, well, y'all go sit in the parlor, and we'll have come upstairs in a few minutes. So um, we did, sat down. I said, where are you from? And she says, uh, Canada. And I says, well, probably we're from Sam Manso. And she said, nine. <laughs> so we, so we go upstairs to the, where they're having tacos, and she gets up and goes in the kitchen. And I get up and goes in the kitchen where we could talk. And uh, um, OK. Her brother had come from Canada to St. Louis to Chillicothe, Missouri, because the school that they were with had purchased the campus of the Chillicothe Business College. And all of her family had migrated from Canada to Chillicothe. They built the Everest Motel in Chillicothe and another motel in Brookfield, and uh, one of them went into insurance and they worked with this college. I didn't take my watch off. How much time we got? Am I, am I bored? Okay, I'll move on. Y'all ain't got a word going in there. So anyway, her mom liked me, and uh, we got married. Um, full Gospel Businessmen has been uh, of interest to me uh, for a long time. There was a uh, convention 
at the uh, Stratford Hilton Hotel in downtown Dallas. Yeah, in downtown Dallas. And uh, the speaker was Catherine Kuhlman. And Dino was there with his piano and his candelabra. And, uh, and Cam anyway, Catherine says, somebody in that section over there has cancer and God is healing you. Would you stand up? The lady did. She stand up and came down. Um, this was before Roy Bryant was involved with full gospel in that time. And they didn't meet their budget. They, they left town without bills paid. Um, they had asked a, a gentleman from Miss Minnesota to come and give his testimony. And he was in Dallas. And he didn't have money to go to Minnesota, to back home. So, brother-in-law Herb invited us, him, to come to our church where we could raise money for him. So, I had uh, a whiplash suffering from a rear-ended auto accident. And uh, went to the altar, got prayed for, got healed. And they also prayed for the, to speak in tongues. I had never spoken in tongues in this Pentecostal family when we were in. So uh, next day I'm driving to work and I go boop, 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 I go, what's going on here? This doesn't sound like tongues. So the next night, went forward again, and at the altar, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I spoke in tongues. Sound like Chinese with cool hands. I saw people with cool hands. Sound like Russian. I saw the onion domes. Sound like islands of the Pacific. I was speaking in tongues that I didn't understand, but I was speaking a bunch of different languages. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's an, that's an advantage. I was joining the Greater Dallas Association of Realtors, a different name then. And in order to join, I, I, I bought a company, another real estate company, going to visit for myself. In order to join this organization, you had to be approved. It was a good old boys organization then. And uh, I had made some non, some people were non-friends, something like that. Um, anyway, I'm in this office, and I got really burdened. I got really burdened. I said, something's going on, God. So I went and parked my car behind the uh, Sunset High School, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed through. And I prayed in tongues, and I prayed through. Learned later that they were split on it, accepting me as a member, and D. Miles changed his boat, and he said, "Ah, oh, Don's good. He'll be all right. We'll get him." So I joined the Great Association and went busy for myself. Okay. What's next? Um, full gospel management. Oh. Uh, this lady that got got healed of cancer, I was holding an open house. She and her mother came to my open house. We got to talking and got acquainted and found out that she was the person that Catherine Kuhlman had paid for, and she, she got healed of cancer. She, anyway, she got a real estate license doing work for me, and uh, she had a client that uh, was wanting to make a contribution to the 700 Club. At that point, they were taking... Um, Money, uh, money yeah. uh, stocks and bonds, and, and real estate. And this lady wanted, had a house she wanted to go need it. They wouldn't accept it because there's still a mortgage on it. So Cindy and Loretta and I went to San Antonio, where the house was, put up a sign, went out there the next day with an open sign. People, agent came through, and they sold the house. Full Gospel Management was having a meeting in Garland, Texas. The guest speaker was Ben Kinslow, 700 right? I was able to take him the check for ten thousand dollars, and I got to hug his neck. He's a beautiful man. I love that man. Um, you mentioned the uh, retreat, advance. Um, first time I went to one of those, I was broke. It was one of those times when you're working on commissions and so forth like that, and I just didn't have any money, and uh, so somebody comped me. And uh, I worked with, with them, and we stopped at Dairy Queen, of course, in Fairfield, and they bought my stuff or whatever it was. They had a, uh, 
a lake there at the camp, and uh, I walked out on the uh, boat ramp or uh, whatever it was, went out into the lake, and sat down on the end of that ramp, and I prayed. And I prayed a lot. And I confessed some things. Yeah, I, can, I had some things to confess. Um, when you broke, you probably do have things to confess. Anyway, um, I walked back toward the barracks where we were, and uh, there was a, a guy there sitting on the step of a vacant building, and he was a pilot from Houston, airline pilot. We had a long talk. Next year at the advance, uh, I took some guys with me and I in, uh, in my new car. God is great. Um, Tyre said something about tithing. Um, if we tithe, God honors it. If we don't, it goes away anyway. So uh, that's something that we learned and, uh, and practice. And it works. Um, at the, uh, I wonder if there's any, anybody here that hasn't accepted Jesus as your Savior? Any, any white knuckle on the boot? boot uh, <laughs> <laughs> people here? Uh, if so, then I'd like to ask the, uh, the members here, the leaders here, to come forward and uh, give you an opportunity to make that prayer and accept Jesus as your personal Savior tonight.